is nothing bigger or older than the universe. The questions I would like to talk about are... 1. Where did we come from? How did the universe come into being? Are we alone in the universe? Is there alien life out there? What is the future of the human race? Good morning and welcome to Bank Chat. I'm Hugh Jewett and your co-host today is the writer and broadcaster Michael Chigani. Michael, good morning to you. Morning, Hugh. In the main topic today, we're talking about life on other planets and how we should deal with it. Theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking has been making headlines warning that we'd better be wary of aliens. He thinks it's likely that life does exist elsewhere in the universe and it wouldn't necessarily be very affable. If aliens visit us, he said, the outcome will be much as when Columbus landed in America, which didn't turn out well for the Native Americans. What are the chances of such a visit? How should we prepare? Are other life forms likely to be friendly or will they be out for what they can get? Your views are more than welcome. Give us a call on 233-8826 or email backchat at rthk.org.hk or join the discussion which is underway on our Facebook page. That's Backchat on RTHK Radio 3. And after 9.15, will we get the World Cup on regular TV? For the discussion, we have Gordon Matthews, Professor of Anthropology at the Chinese University. Welcome back to you, Professor Matthews. Uh, Moon Fung, founder and chairman of the Hong Kong UFO Club, a committee member of the Institute of uh, Ufology uh, in Hong Kong. In our central studio, Neil Gould, who's founder of the Hong Kong Exopolitics website and director of the Exopolitics Institute. And joining us on the line, Philip Hazley from the United States, who's a professor of anthropology from the Niagara County Community College. And we also hope to be joined soon by Dr. Stephen Hughes, who's a lecturer in astrophysics. Astrophysics and Physics at Queensland University of Technology um, in Australia. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Neil Gould, I think we'll start with you. Good morning. Good morning. Because you're the person who's probably done more thinking about this than this particular topic than almost anyone else, haven't you? Just explain what exopolitics is. Well, ex exopolitics is the study of the political and social implications of extraterrestrial life. Okay. Are you getting ready for a visit? I, I know... Can we kind of set aside the issue of whether there are aliens among us? Maybe we'll get onto that later. I know you, 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 you know, you, we've spoken before about your, your experiences of UFOs and so on. But um, are you, do you also think about, in general, how the world should prepare for uh, 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 that, uh, that first encounter with alien life? Well, it's, we are being prepared. I mean, quite clearly, uh, there have been release of uh, files from um, the French. Uh, Jean-Paul and France have released the UFO files. The UK have. The Brazilian... Uh, um, UFO files are an ongoing process. Uh, we notice now that uh, the Kepler mission is finding exoplanets out of space, and I think everybody's covering their bets. And uh, in fact, the Vatican is, uh, has a great fear of um, repeating its mistakes with Copernicus and Galileo when they were nearly strung up uh, for making declarations that the um, Earth is not the center of the universe. Um, and they've just recently had uh, two huge um, astrobiological conferences. Um, attended by the Pontifical Academy of Sciences and the Royal Society of London. So clearly uh, we are getting ready for a change of paradigm. So you obviously uh, believe that there are aliens among us, but have you seen an alien or a UFO? I, I don't think that's... Yes, I mean, there's many people who have seen aliens and UFO. Uh, testimony, as you know, is the uh, tenets of the um, of Western legal system, you know, testimony. I've experienced face-to-face -face contact, and so have many, but this is well, what have, how have you Well, what did you see? I saw extraterrestrial. Came into my room when I was young. There are many kids who um, have these ongoing experiences. There are many people, such as George Adamski, uh, people such as Orfe Angelucci, um, Howard Menger, uh, many, many people in, in the last 50 years have had this kind of experience, and the messages are very, very clear. And, and what should our attitude be? Should we be wary or should we be welcoming? What do you think? Well, I think, first of all, the universe has put out almost every single permutation of, of consciousness in incarnate bodies. So, yes, I mean, there are, there are, it's difficult to say what's good, what's bad. I mean, what are we? You just go to Darfur, you just go to uh, Yugoslavia, the old Yugoslavia, you look at what happened in Germany. I mean, are we good, are we bad, can we judge? We kill whales, we kill all sorts of life forms, we starve. We're the only planet in the universe where one billion people eat and the rest starve and they're not even brought into the economy. 
and we have this ridiculous financial system that we all believe in, this paper money, this fiat money. I mean, what are we? How, how can we judge? Of course, we've done research on these various, uh, the various typologies of species out there. We know more or less what is, let's say, positive and what's regressive. But do you buy do you buy the warning from uh, Stephen Hawking that uh, we should leave well alone because if they do come here they'll just raid us and then they'll move on? They could have taken us out long ago. In fact, we are almost in a fish tank. We are almost an experiment. We are continuously being circled by craft. We are being watched, and we are being invited to matriculate into the uh, for qualification into the galactic community. So we have to get rid of weapons in space. We have to behave ourselves. We have to realize our consciousness has to rise to the point where when I hurt you, I hurt myself. When we realize that, we'll be ready for integration into the galactic community. So we should behave ourselves. We should, we should at least, yes, we should at least start to listen to the spiritual messages that were given to us at the time of the, uh, the, the, the first explosion of the, uh, the atom bomb at Trinity, the test site in America. Okay, Gordon Matthews, good morning to you. Um, from an anthropologist's point of view, what do you think of uh, what Stephen Hawking had to say? This lesson drawn from history. Well, history. first of all, compared to, to Neil Gold, I, I totally agree with your, your, the, the politics of your statement. I'm a lot more skeptical about the existence of extraterrestrials. Um, from my point of view, as a skeptic, no one has any idea. Now, Stephen Hawking obviously is a noted astrophysicist. He's, he's a genius. But he doesn't know any more than anyone else does what we would actually experience. And I would say that our visions of extraterrestrials are very much like our visions of, of human beings. You know, you go back 2,500 years, Mencius is saying human nature is basically good. Shun Tzu is saying it's basically bad. Uh, are UFOs basically like Star Trek or is it like War of the Worlds? We don't know. It's good to think about it because I totally agree with my co-panelists here that it may well happen that we will encounter other beings. What they're going to be like remains the great mystery, although I certainly hope it happens in my lifetime. Is there any possibility, as some people say, that in fact there is no God and then and uh, aliens, extraterrestrials, put us here? That's quite possible, but I would make a different historical example. Look at, uh, for example, uh, Pizarro going to the Incas and being believed as a god, he turned out to be the conqueror, obliterating the Inca civilization. It may well be that any extraterrestrials we run into may do the same thing as Stephen Hawking is talking about. This is kind of like a bad example because the Colombians are actually only, say, 100 years at most, at more advanced than the Indians. But we are talking about um, other species, if they are able to go through wormholes to come to us, um, the nearest star or planet is 4.2 light years, right? So um, they should have at least 10,000, okay, thousands of peaceful years in order to develop a thousand years of technology to go through this, to come to visit us. Okay, Moon, and that's right. You're absolutely right. right. My question would be, as human beings, we treat higher species of animals well, or at least we're trying to. You know, we're trying not to butcher elephants or chimpanzees and so on. Bacteria, I though, but listen to me, listen to me. Bacteria, though, we simply are mosquitoes. We simply swat. They're lower species. We kill them. Okay. Are human beings going to be there any are... different for any higher level of civilization of species you're talking about? There are contact cases, which is... Um, contact with alien look uh, I mean human looking aliens there's many many real example with a lot of hardcore data analysis metal analysis um, you um, with your full witnesses and um, uh, and what do they make of us what what do you think aliens make of humans um, they're coming over for for most of the contact cases and a spiritual abduction cases I would say they are negative cases in abduction okay they are trying to warn us about basically the same thing that we're screwing up with our own ass we are we are we are really way behind with the um, galactic peaceful unions and so we are being alienated from being reaching out but why haven't they made themselves more evident more clear they did there's so many cases that they try so hard to to prove themselves or to, to contact us, but they could just stand government, on top of the Empire State Building and say, "Here I am." Why don't they do that? They, in fact, they try 